Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. At Unfold Data Science, I try to make things clear from the scratch. I try to cover things from the most basic level and that is what we will do in this video as well. Some of the must know topics in machine learning and deep learning are distance matrices. So these distance matrices are used in many algorithms. So if you have heard of k-means clustering or if you have heard of k nearest neighbors, even in recommendation systems, many distance measures or distance matrices are used. Some of the common ones you would have heard of Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, cosine similarity. In this video, we are going to discuss in detail all these matrices, how it works, what is their usability in business context and when to use what. So let us start guys one by one. First of all, I want you to have a very simple way of remembering these things. Okay. So the simplest way to memorize these things is two concepts. One is known as Minkowski distance. So Minkowski was a famous mathematician and according to Minkowski, the distance between two points P and Q is PI minus QI to the power P summation for all the dimension i to n and 1 by p is the power of this. We will simplify this, don't worry. And second is cosine similarity. Cosine similarity is nothing but the angle between two vectors when two vectors are drawn from two points in the plane. I will simplify this also, don't worry, okay. First of all, what is this guys? So let us take a simple example here, okay. Let us say there is one guy Aman and other guy Kumar, okay. Two guys are here. So this is Aman and this is Kumar, okay. These two guys have different different features. For example, feature one is, uh, let, let me give some movie names and their rating. So feature one is let us say Titanic. Feature two is let us say Mission Impossible. Feature 3 is let us say some other movie, maybe Godzilla. Feature 4 can be some other movie or series, let us say Game of Thrones. So how much Aman likes Titanic on this scale of 1 to 10, let us say 8. How much Kumar likes 6. How much Aman likes Mission Impossible out of 10, let us say 7. How much Kumar likes, let us say 5 and similarly other movies. In this case, these movies are nothing but features of your data. Now suppose I want to understand how similar or dissimilar is Aman's test with this guy's test, Kumar's test. What we will do? We will just plot these points in an n-dimensional plane and see how close or how far are these points. Now here there are four dimensions guys. I cannot draw a four dimension chart here. Hence let's keep it simple up to two dimension to understand it better. Let us say this is my two dimension plane. On x axis I have Titanic and on y axis I have Mission Impossible. Okay. Now how much Aman likes Titanic and how much Aman likes Mission Impossible? Let us say this is 8 and let us say this is 7 roughly. So Aman will come somewhere here. Okay. What about the other guy? Titanic other guy 6. Okay. Let us say this is 6 and other guy likes Mission Impossible also 5. This guy seems to be a conservative guy. So let us give it here. Now this is Aman and this is other guy Kumar. Okay. So how similar or how dissimilar these the test of Aman and this guy are? The answer of this question will be given by these distance measures in machine learning and will be used in many decision making. Okay. So tomorrow what we can do is if their tests are same then we can recommend the movies watched by Aman to this guy and vice versa. Okay. But to understand how these distances are calculated, the basic of two main distances, which is known as Manhattan, you would have heard of a distance metric called Manhattan distance. Okay. And you would have heard of another distance metric called Euclidean distance. Okay. The basis of these two distances are nothing but Minkowski distance. In this formula, if you make p is equal to 0, it becomes a Manhattan distance and if you make p is equal to 1, sorry p is equal to 2, 
this will be p is equal to 1 basically p is equal to 1 is your manhattan and p is equal to 2 is your euclidean distance okay if i ask you what is the manhattan distance between these two points your simple answer will be manhattan distance is equal to x1 minus x2 modulus plus y1 minus y2 modulus so 8 minus 6 absolute plus 7 minus 5 absolute this is manhattan distance if i ask you what is euclidean distance between these two points you should say me euclidean distance is equal to under root of 8 minus 6 whole square which is 2 square plus 7 minus 5 whole square which is 2 square again this is your euclidean distance now what is the difference guys both these are coming from this formula only see this carefully if you put p is equal to 1 this term goes out of the picture this term goes out of the picture p minus q so one data point minus other data point that is your manhattan if you put p is equal to 2 1 by 2 is nothing but square root square root comes here and then x1 minus x2 plus y1 minus y2 whole square that is your euclidean distance so what is the difference guys when do you when do we use what so intuitively if you see right euclidean distance is little easier to understand and simpler actually what we are doing on many dimensions we are seeing the square of that distance and taking the square root but one problem with euclidean distance is if the data dimension increases beyond the limit for example here we are talking about two dimensions suppose the dimension increases beyond the limit let us say aman and kumar both rates 500 different movies then euclidean distance start becoming little complex and that is where mathematics can suggest to use manhattan distance okay so both are good in its own way but sometimes euclidean distance becomes little more complex this is about manhattan euclidean and minkowski so if you take p is equal to 3 4 5 whatever all those distances will be minkowski distance so these three things we covered now one simple thing before we go on to cosine is known as hamming distance very simple to understand we will quickly cover so hamming distance is defined for two strings okay it is for characters let us say one character is aman a m a n okay and other character is let us say a k a i so hamming distance you can compute only between strings of similar length okay you cannot have one of four size one of five size well, how hamming distance is calculated is if bitwise the values are same it will say distance 0 bitwise values are different it will say distance 1 and in the end it will add so here what will be the hamming distance hamming distance will be 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 between these two strings simple to understand and defined for strings now we will cover what is cosine similarity and what is cosine distance in detail okay so for knowing that guys I will just want you to do little revision of think about what you learned about cos theta in trigonometry okay so I am sure all of you would have read trigonometry in your school so what you learned about cos theta in trigonometry so how cosine distance is calculated is two things we need to understand here one is known as cosine similarity okay and other is known as cosine distance okay cosine similarity is nothing but cos theta and cosine distance is nothing but 1 minus cos theta now what is this theta guys let us try to understand with an example let us say this is my xy plane and same data we take for example this is aman row and this is kumar row there are some values here right let us say for simplicity aman lies here and kumar lies here okay so if you join this point with the origin it makes some angle with the origin right this angle and if you join kumar with this then this vector makes some angle with the origin what is the difference of these two angles so this theta that you see here the difference this theta right this becomes the theta that we plug here now this becomes aman vector this becomes kumar vector let us try to understand with another example let us say point a is somewhere here and point b is somewhere here 
so a vector will be this and b vector will be this what is the angle guys 90 degree if the angle is 90 degree then what is the value of cos 90 the value is 0 hence similarity for this will be 0 and distance will be 1 now imagine there is one point c here okay what is the uh, angle c will make 0 what is the angle a will make 0 the difference is 0 cos 0 is 1 so similarity will be 1 and distance will be 0 this is how cosine similarity cosine distance are calculated between any two points now we have seen different distance matrices so people will ask you sometimes in interview when cosine will make sense and when Euclidean will make sense something like this okay so without you know being able to see data in an n dimensional plane it is difficult to see still you can give some business cases where one will make sense and where other will make sense let me give you some practical examples okay so let us take another example here let us take another example let us take a xy plane let us assume this is point a this is point b and this is point c let us say there are many people many rows okay let us assume this is an equilateral triangle what happens if you compute a euclidean distance between these points you will see that a to b b to c and c to a all are same euclidean distance value will be same however if you compute a cosine similarity you might see a minor difference between the angles theta 1 theta 2 these angles right so you can take a call whether b is nearer to a or c is nearer to a in this type of scenario cosine similarity makes more sense now imagine another other scenario where this is your point a this is your point b and somewhere here is your point c so if you take a cosine similarity all a b and c will be same i mean difference between a and b b and c and a and c will be same but if you take a euclidean distance you will find that a and b are nearer whereas a, a and c are far so here you know uh, euclidean will make more sense or manhattan will make more sense so to keep it simple if we have to compute the alignment or the angle of the data then cosine similarity makes sense and if we have to see the distances just the distances then euclidean will make more sense without without looking at the data in a plane how it is you know multiple points are scattered taking a call is little tricky but we have to understand all the distance matrices and we have to kind of try which matrix works best for us so what are the different things we covered guys Minkowski distance very simple formula I'll write one more time so that you can recollect i is equal to 1 to n p i minus q i uh, take power p and make it 1 by p if you make p is equal to 0 it becomes Manhattan p is equal to 1 it be sorry p is equal to 1 Manhattan p is equal to 2 Euclidean cosine similarity we understand Hamming distance bitwise comparison insert 1 if there is a difference or zero if there is no difference that is how you can remember all these things and talk with someone with the confidence when they ask you anything around these that is what my purpose of this video i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care